Good morning from a very chilly Bulgaria. Today we're doing something we don't normally do and we're about to jump on a guided tour all the way to the Rila Monastery and Boyana Church. That is two UNESCO World Heritage Sites and two of the most photographed places in all of Bulgaria. And we're at a different one right now. We're getting picked up behind the Sir Alexander Nevsky Cathedral and it is so beautiful. The sun's just coming up and turning everything golden, which is just making the golden dome like so gold. We've already met our host, he's awesome, and we're going on a big tour today, there's going to be 40 people, and I think they're about to leave. <laughs> okay, so after a 30 minute drive, we have come to the, what used to be a village of Boyana. Over the last 50 years, Sofia's just got so big that they've kind of adopted Boyana as just a neighborhood within Sofia. And it's one of the like ritzy neighborhoods, like it's yeah. quite spenny to live out here. You can tell, it's nice. It's really nice, all the pretty trees and like the cobblestone ground. But the church is about to open, so we're gonna go in and it's in this massive parkland with like sequoia trees. It just looks so peaceful. So the Boyana church is actually a museum, which is why it costs 10 lev to enter and you can't take pictures inside, just like any other monastery, just to show respect. I did that thing where I like, you buy them and you're talking English and then you say, blag on traya, and then just get this massive smile on your face. It was nice. I'm very cold. <laughs> Just got our tickets. They are 10 lev each to go inside and you're only allowed in for 10 minutes because it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the frescoes inside are so fragile, which kind of makes sense. So it's 10, a group of 10 people in for 10 minutes at a time and that's it. You're also obviously not allowed to take photos. It is super pretty even from the outside and they say that the outside is like boring compared to the inside but there's something about the pretty gardens and the trees. They're all turning like the autumnal colours set against the red brick. I feel so cosy and chilly and adventurous and happy. time of year perfect because it's the leaves falling off the trees and the, like, the like blanket the floor with golden crunch yeah but the sky is still like blue yeah I love it a bit fresh
That was really cool. We've just come outside of the church. That was way worth the 10 left. You could spend hours in there easily. So it's split into three sections. The first section was built in 10 BC, second section 13 BC, and the last section was some other time. Later than that. Holy moly though, the frescoes in there look so cool and they're done by people they don't even know who did them. And they're like two layers. There's like the really old layer from when the original part was built and then they got repainted when the centre part was built and everything got repainted but you can see where it's like peeling off and showing that, oh, it's just crazy. I didn't think it was going to be that pretty. I didn't know there'd be that much information in there. They even have two paintings where the eyes follow you, like the Mona, Mona Lisa, Lisa eyes. but 300 years before Mona Lisa. I'm so excited for the real monastery now. Yeah, that go. was really cool. <laughs> it's cold enough we had to put our jackets on. From here we've got two hours in the car to get to Rila Monastery. Should be a pretty nice drive. First we have to, to pass the mountain from the other side, from the south side. And that's why we picked Traventuria. We just had a two hour drive through the Bulgarian wilderness through all these local villages while getting a history of Bulgaria. It was amazing just driving down the roads and all of the trees are going from like green to yellow and red. It was so dang pretty. Massive mountains in the background. And then we drive up here and we park like right next to the monastery. It's so good. Like I can't imagine trying to do this through public transport or like renting a car or getting a taxi. It would just be so frustrating. There's walnuts trying to kill us. And you wouldn't get any of the cool history or the cool facts. Like, he just knows so much. And it's all so interesting. Mm. I love it. Let's go inside. Oh my God. Gosh, the detail in those paintings are really... It is crazy. We couldn't bring cameras in there, obviously, but you walk in and you're just shot in the face with gold. There's gold everywhere. You can see like the smoke from the candles coming up, which shows the lights like streaming in through the window. It's so beautiful. Apparently it's like the traditional way that the monasteries are here. So every monastery we see should be as epic as that. They had the grave of the last king of the last kingdom of Bulgaria in there. And they also had they were calling them relics, but the bones of the saint that kind of started this whole region. Effectively, it was a guy who was performing miracles and living up in a cave, and they wanted to kind of make that a bigger deal. And this is what you get. architect of this place that actually was the architect and the builder two times put a little selfie a little easter egg of himself in the building right on the last day of building he made like a cement thing of his face it's the first bulgarian selfie <laughs>
think one of my favorite things is the frescoes on the outside show like judgment day I guess it is I don't know what the religious term for it but it's like hell is on the bottom just regular day earth life is in the middle and then the top is all the angels and heaven it's so cool I love it here it's so pretty and then with the green trees in the background and they're all changing colors and the mountain tops I think it's time for a donut though I don't know what I can't remember what they're called a Bulgarian donut <laughs> We got our uh, Makitsa to go and you can come on this little hike down to walk below the monastery along the river. So we're going to try our traditional Makitsa. We got it from the bakery that used to serve the monks that all lived in the monastery. So it's been there since like forever. You buy them from like this little window and then you have to, everyone was putting this, what I assume is icing sugar on top of them. So we just did the same. It's like corn dog coating into a donut. I believe these are called like Bulgarian donuts. Pretty good. The icing sugar really makes a difference. Yum. They give you a lot of time here. When we first got to the monastery, we had 45 minutes and we walked around with our tour guide. He was great, he showed us so much stuff. And then they gave us two hours to walk around by ourselves. So you were not felt rushed in any way. Which meant that we could come all the way down to this river and have our traditional donuts in peace. So nice, so good. And we still got time left over. Beautiful. And that's it, back where we started. That tour was really, really good. Like, better than expected. If you do come to Sofia and you're interested in checking it out, all the information will be linked below. Tomorrow, we're gonna try all things Bulgarian food. Woo! We got our Mac, oh, I've forgotten all Mac, what's it called? I don't know.